mic on the MIC. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Good to be back. My name is Dean, and uh, we've got a one-on-one today. It's kind of a circus around here from time to time. You get, like, different people that come in, and you got, like, five guys that want to be on, and one guy drops out, and then this guy's too busy, and he's like, I bet it, da 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 So we stripped it down today because our guest on this version of the Dean Blundell Show here at Cryer.co, Cryer Media, um, some we've had on the show several times, but I've never gotten a chance to talk to him because what happens is uh, either his ADHD takes over or a bunch of people get into the conversation and I can't fucking figure out where we're going and we can never finish a conversation. Uh, it's a gentleman that I have spoken to and known for a long time. Uh, he's currently doing a 20th anniversary tour month after month, day after day, year after year with his friend Kenny uh, from Kenny versus Spenny. Please welcome back to the program, Mr. S- Spencer oh, Rice, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Spencer almost, Rice. You almost did it, Dean. I, I know. I almost called you Kenny. <laughs> Sorry, dude. It's okay, everybody does it. I don't, do they? Yeah. They call, like, do they get? Which is wild because you guys are both so polar opposite. If you've right. watched any of the seven seasons of Kenny versus Spenny, uh, <laughs> if you've been to any of your shows, you're like completely fucking different. Totally, a hundred percent different. Well. You know, we've discussed this before, uh, the, doing the tour for so long, like eight years now off, you know, off and on, uh, mostly on, it seems, uh, you know, I have become, uh, because most of the fans tilt towards Kenny in the same way that heels became popular in wrestling during the Attitude Era. Yeah. So uh, I have become what I call a reverse heel uh, which is uh, all the Kenny fans out there are douchebags, and uh, I, I, I go after them. So it's odd. It's it's sort of changed the dynamic from the live show to the TV show. But yeah. yes, we are very different. Yeah, very different, but very close. Uh, it, it, some of it's an act, some of it isn't. We'll obviously kind of chat about that a little bit. But where did you guys? I was thinking about it today because I've talked to you like a hundred times. We DM all the time. We share. We, we're going to talk about Kinsella. We're going to talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene. We're going to talk about asses today. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. But um, and you being an ass on Twitter and getting canceled the other day, that was a lot of fun to watch. I've never seen canceled? someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got canceled for fat shamming. I don't know if you know that you were fat shamming people. But I, I could use my account. So they, I just got uh, a lot of co- negative comments. Yeah, well, you can get canceled and still have an account. But oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, But when you don't notice you're canceled, it apparently doesn't apply to you. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no fucking idea. <laughs> no, you didn't get canceled. But okay. um, anyway, we'll talk about that coming up. But where did you guys meet? Like, that's what I want to know. Because it was these are questions I wanted to ask you. We've had you on the show a fucking hundred times, and I never get a chance to get to the bottom uh, of, of any question I ever ask you because the question gets hijacked or you start talking about um, Donald Trump or American politics or religion. Right. So um, where did you two meet? You and Kenny. High school? How did you get together? Before, way before our, our fathers were friends, and and they they uh, there's a great picture of them which was lost through the ages of, of them with a couple of guys at Wasaga Beach. They're wearing Bermuda shorts and trying to pick up chicks. Um, Jack Hotz was his dad. They both went to the University of Toronto. I believe they lived in the same dorm. I don't know why people lived in a dorm when they uh, it, were in the same city that they lived, but anyways. Uh, and so I don't remember the first time I met him. He would have been, I'm four years older, so he would have been uh, quite young. Uh, we became, uh, hard and fast friends. I had babysat for him a couple of times, that kind of stuff, uh, in high school. Mm-hmm. That's where you, that's where you solidified your friendship. You were four years older yeah. than him. Yeah. 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 Well, that <laughs> Kenny makes fun of that as if I'm, I'm, I'm cruising for young boys, uh, back then, but <laughs> No, the, the reality was uh, there was grade 13 back in those days. Yeah. And as grade 13 started approaching, especially at Forest Hill, which is a lot of uh, Jews, and Jews are very uh, 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 education-oriented and profession-oriented. So I found that a lot of my – and I, I didn't live in Forest Hill. I lived basically just a Rosedale adjacent, we'd call it. And uh, the, my friends started to get uh, really serious about university and stuff like that. And I wasn't, uh, I didn't grow up that way. I, I almost thought I wasn't going to go to university. So Kenny and his friends were the, 
the 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 funniest the the more uh, more I had in common with them than my friends uh, who had become all of a sudden interested in university and getting degrees and becoming doctors and lawyers etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started hanging out with him and his friends because they still partied and had a good time. Okay, and uh, so you started cruising for young boys with Kenny and all his friends, <laughs> and then you you decide that you've got more in common with them. But you, when do you start? You, what you started? What uh, Kenny versus Benny? Two thousand, two thousand one. When did you start? I, I uh, Dean, I think I've told you I have a chronology disease. Uh, I don't know when things happen. I, <laughs> no, I'm I'm not kidding. You have it's no a, idea when Kenny versus Benny started. It was like a big break. You don't know when your big break was. No, it's why, I don't Is know it the drugs. And when we our first break was we raised uh, a quarter of a million dollars and made a movie called Pitch. Okay, and that and that got a big splash at the Toronto Film Festival. Uh, and that was a documentary, uh, uh, a somewhat a real documentary about us trying to sell a script that we wrote uh, about a mafia don who goes in for a hernia operation and accidentally gets a sex change. And he has to run the mafia without his cojones, so to speak. So um, that was our first break. I don't know yeah. what year this is. I'm sorry. Because I don't think in terms of time, I don't memorize the years. Can Kenny you're creative. Would, That's what you always say to me. You're a creative. I'm a creative guy. I don't really know. I don't keep track of time. I don't write things down. I'm a creative. Maybe that's, I don't think I've ever said that, but okay. Yeah. You've said that to me like a hundred okay. times. You're like, I'm a creative. I don't, I don't focus on business. I'm a creative guy. That's what I you also said. have a bad memory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it. So, uh, it goes for seven years, but when did you guys start Kenny versus Penny? Like what was the impetus? Because if you watch the show and I know you're tired of talking about it, but you're on tour and I'm establishing some backstory here on a legendary yeah. A legendary Canadian comedian series that the, the the creators of South Park had to sign on to executive produce because they fucking loved you guys so much. So, yeah. And you guys are on tour and you're sustaining lives with this tour. It's an incredible story. So I'm trying to establish how you guys came up with Kenny versus Spenny in terms of what you guys were going to do, challenges, yeah. punishments, and how you bore those characters out. Because that's what I loved about the show is that you can pick sides on that show. Right. And it's about a personality more than it was about the punishment or about how fucking ridiculous it was. Right. All right. Well, let's start with uh, we did that movie pitch. Right. Yeah. And we toured with the film uh, to film festivals in Europe, all over the world. The film did reasonably well. It didn't make money, but it did well. Made its how, old money you? how old were you at this time? I don't know. Dean, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so what happened is. Uh, we get a phone call uh, from uh, a woman named Abby who uh, was uh, friends with or working with a guy named David Tochterman. Tochterman worked for Will Smith's. Uh, Will Smith has a production company called, uh, oh, fuck, I'm getting old, man. Over Overbrook Entertainment, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, and this was out of the blue, completely out of the blue. At the time, Kenny and I were writing another feature for us to star in because we'd seen that people were laughing at our dynamic when we toured with Pitch, which was a somewhat serious documentary. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so uh, we get the call out of the blue. And long story short, uh, they give us, uh, I think, 10 grand each, which is called a development deal in L.A. They don't really give those out much anymore. Uh, to come move to LA and start pitching shows. We didn't have any shows, but we started, we, we, we came up with like five shows and uh, every pitch meeting was, uh, uh, was uh, amazing except for one. Uh, we pitched uh, everywhere, Paramount, Warner Brothers, like everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically uh, the worst pitch meeting of all was uh, at a network. Uh, uh, oh my God, my memory. Um, whatever that network is, I'll come back to, <laughs> uh, the guy stared at us. We did our, our, our pitch and he didn't smile, never mind laugh. And they ended up buying the pilot. So we shot the pilot and exactly right out of the American executive infringing upon the artsy fartsies, uh, story, uh, they started giving us notes as they were watching, you know, different days that we shot the show. And it became apparent to both of us that their notes had nothing to do with what we felt the show was. Mm. So they ended up pulling the plug, uh, but we finished the pilot and somehow it got into the hands of John Moranis, who I used to be when I was a production assistant. 
this is so boring. But anyways, when I was oppressed, it's not boring. It's not boring. Stop, stop pretending it's boring because this is all the stuff I've wanted to ask you about. So if oh. it's boring, it's my fault. This is a conversation I'm having okay. with you because okay. I'm interested in your life, Kenny. Okay. Spenny. So, <laughs> be nice if you got my name right. Though. I know it's Spenny. It's Spencer like, Rice. Spencer, anyway, Spenny. so so uh, basically, uh, when I worked as a production assistant after I got out of film school, which is the lowest level job you can have. Yeah. Uh, I worked for, uh, you know, Robert Lantos's company. It was a, a three or four uh, country production, an international production of a kid show uh, called The Mighty Jungle. And I used to, my one of my jobs was to go to head office, which was up on Young Street and deliver mail and stuff like that. And I, I met and befriended a guy named John Moranis, who at the time was a lawyer for uh, Alliance. And uh, anyway, somehow uh, this pilot that we was canceled, but we finished it, got to his desk and we got a phone call saying he absolutely almost threw up laughing. He thinks it's great. And maybe about a year later, Kenny and I were living in L.A. at the time. He sold it to CBC, which was 26 episodes, which was a, a huge order. Now they don't do orders that big. Massive. Uh, like if you understand anything about television, 26 episodes of anything is like unfucking heard of. Usually now it's like Netflix or streaming service, like six or eight, if you're lucky. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, so we got lucky that way. And then, uh, of course, uh, when we were on before uh, at, at the 530 uh, spot, whatever funding they accessed was uh, was in the kids block. So it would literally be like me eating apples out of a toilet. And then we go, and now the news with Peter Mansbridge. We're on at 530. <laughs> and so as soon as it became... Uh, uh, obvious to the higher ups at CBC what we were up to, we were canceled immediately. And uh, we got the most luck of all was uh, Showcase picked us up and then we did uh, the rest of the, you know, I don't know, five or six years there. Yeah, six years, six extra years. Yeah, 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 yeah. But def it's it was definitive, right? Like, I mean, we've talked about it a million times, which lends itself, obviously, to the tour that you guys are on. And so I've seen every episode of Kenny versus Spenny, every single episode. You're on a 20, uh, 20th anniversary tour. This is the eighth year of the 20th anniversary tour, apparently. And people uh, think we look like that. I, a couple of people have said, man, you guys really have aged. So. Yeah, you both, you both have smoker's yellow white hair, too, in that yeah, picture, yeah. which is nice. Well, I actually do have white hair, but I uh, use a lot of hair dye. But anyways. That's okay. You can do whatever you want. You're your own man. Uh, it starts again in Sudbury, your tour, April 1st, 2023, at the Grand Elgin Theater, doors at 630. Showtime is 730. If you go to eventbrite.ca, you can uh, figure out how you can get yourself uh, some tickets. It, it, but this is like... A, 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 this I, I, we're, I don't know. I'm leaving in a couple of days. We're going to Sudbury, North Bay, yeah. and the two. Is that what that was? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you're going to Sudbury first. Then okay. you're going to North Bay. This is yeah. Sudbury, tickets in Sudbury. Yes. Uh, and then you're going to the Sioux. And um, April 1st, Sudbury, North Bay. And then you fucking beat it all the way to Charlottetown, PEI, Summerside, PEI, Fredericton, New Brunswick, Moncton. If you go to Kenny Hot's Facebook account, you can go check it out. It's also all of these dates are also in the. Uh, description of the podcast if you want to go and see kenny versus spending live at a place near you they're going uh ontario all the way out east charlottetown summerside pi fredericton moncton halifax truro st john's cornerbrook newfoundland as well and where, then we're where, in the u.s we're doing the u.s in the back half of the year so all right do you, what's the you know that's the question i would ask you what's the fan base like in the united states when you it's, go to places in the states is it, you know, is it, it's always a risk uh, yeah. you, know, you don't know, but uh, based on evidence from uh, our Facebook, the Kenny versus Benny Facebook page and whatever, uh, you know, we, we've done Detroit, we've done uh, New Jersey, uh, 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 shit. <laughs> so, uh, 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 some Philadelphia, we did one other city, we did great, we sold out the shows, you know, because we haven't been there, we've, we've, we've been do touring mostly Canada and a little bit in Europe, so uh yeah you know it's still a risk but uh, australia we want to go to but it's so expensive to get there uh you know th that's more of a risk but uh we're i know we're big in australia that's been known for years but uh anyways yeah no you're uh it's awesome it's crazy because like we, we take things in silos right like here in canada i just assumed that you would be selling out everywhere which you do but what are your favorite cities we do but like sudbury for some reason this tour sudbury's not sold out yet so you no? said Arians buy tickets already. All right, Sudbury. Buy these tickets, Sudbury. Kenny versus Spenny. Uh, that's where you need to go and see them. I think it's at the Grand. Yeah, the Grand, 28 Elgin Street. Okay. Eventbrite.ca. Check it out. Where do you love to play the most? Where, what cities uh, do you, you love know, to uh, You know, obviously Europe's cool. Uh, it, it's really, the room is a room full of people that you try to make laugh. That's 
you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it really boils down to uh, where do you like to, you know, have your off days and, and Vancouver's way up there for me. Uh, and I love the ferry boat that takes us to, I think it's Kelowna. I'm not even, or Nanaimo. Nanaimo. Yeah, not yeah. Kelowna. Kelowna's, uh, Kelowna's about two hours, uh, I believe, west. I'm not yeah, sure. I mean, that's I'm a, not mistaken. It, you know, the food is fantastic and it's just a beautiful city. But, you know, we love every, I, I like Calgary. I like, uh, I just, I, I, I love to work. Yeah, I, you know, to me, I'm still pinch myself that I get to do this for a living. So, uh, even, you know, somewhere like the Sioux, it doesn't really matter. It's just, let's go and make people happy. How is it different? How is the live show different from the actual show? Because obviously the stuff you do on television, you can edit, you can, you know, it gets lost in translation, et cetera. You got to keep everybody's attention for how long, how long are these shows? And what's some, some, sometime, well, this particular tour is different. This is the 20th anniversary tour. So Kenny has put together a bunch of videos. Uh, some, most of them, almost all of them have never been seen before. They're, outtakes and whatnot, things that the network wouldn't let us put on. So that's the the anchor of the show. We show clips and, and then we argue about uh, it afterwards or whatever. Um, but generally, uh, we don't, people expect us to maybe compete live. We, like you just said, it would never work on a stage, really, I don't think. So, you know, we basically, uh, you know, Kenny's his lifelong mission to make me look bad and him look good. And that's basically what it is. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, it's stand up, but it's a little different. It's quite unique. I have to say as someone who's a comedy nerd, I don't really know of anything ever on the, on the comedy landscape. That's kind of what we do, which is nice. You know, uh, it's unique, you know, it's got a duo thing to it, but it's got a, you know, a TV show attached to it. It's, I don't know how to describe it, to be honest with you. But are you still doing the proctology exams on stage too? The yes, last yes. exams. Yeah. In fact, the video that you have that I sent you was uh, this happens quite a bit where someone comes comes on stage for uh, it's no longer a proc a proctology exam. We've 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 lost that whole. Uh, just we're going to finger some guy's ass. Basically, is what it's become. Uh, no pretense. So that was my when it first came out. That was what I was going to say. Well, if I'm going to do this, and and there's going to be a willing participant. Yeah, I'm going to spin it into a, a prostate cancer PSA, you know, because that's my brand. And uh, uh, but now we've sort of dropped the pretense and it's just come on up and and, uh, that and let me stick my finger in your ass. Is that the deal? Yeah. It, at first, it was about proctology and it was about yes. giving you a prostate exam like you used to invite people on stage, to stick their fingers in your yeah, ass. Yeah, I, I tried to make it about how uh, homophobic <laughs> men are. Uh, that they won't get a digital exam uh, and it could, uh, you know, end their lives, that decision. However, now I think making it even more uh, uh, ridiculous uh, that, that I would do that is I think you can have fecal samples now can tell you uh, whether you're at risk for prostate cancer. I may be wrong, but. Yeah. Uh, so should, anyway. you, should you not be changing that part of your show to getting someone to give you a fecal sample instead of you driving your fingers in someone's asshole? It's not a bad idea. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many, there you go. There's a uniqueness. How many performers would actually think that's a good idea? Fecal samples of our audience. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You can show up with uh, your clinicians and your lab coat and say, hey, listen, we're us. We're doing you a favor here. Well, one they had like a, one of those COVID things that would say it was <laughs> prostate cancer. Then it would be a real public service. <laughs> yeah, especially if. Stop, it's, Dean, stop doing it for a while because, you know, I don't enjoy doing it. I know it pops the audience like crazy. So Does it? Do they laugh? This because oh. That's what we got here. This is a video from London, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. So this guy came on stage yeah. uh, to get fingered, but as maybe six percent of them, six percent actually change their mind when they're on stage. So I kicked them the fuck off the stage. So okay. you get, that's a good setup there. This is what we have here. We go. Careful, careful. Oh. Absolutely wipes out. Goes up for an anal exam from one Spencer Rice. Goes to get off the stage after deciding he doesn't want to make his fingers in his ass. And he starts making his way back to the stadium because he wiped out. He looked like he was absolutely shit hammed too. Like just goosed. Pretty much have to be to, you know, to even get on the stage uh, at that point in the show. <laughs>
Well, I don't know why they do it, but they do. And uh, I guess I'm grateful for it because it's a heck of an ending for the, uh, you know, for the show. And yeah. now it's like I go, how many of you have seen this before? You know, many people have seen us several times. A lot of people put their hands up. They don't care. They want to see it again. Do you uh, do you get repeat visitors like people who have been to? Yes. Show? Oh, yeah. Well, the best was, uh, I believe, in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, if you remember, if, you, if you've seen all the, if you've seen all the uh, Kenny versus Spenny uh, episodes, uh, the the arm wrestling one where that weasel Kenny Haunts decided to wrestle uh, Spencer Rice, but not me. Yeah. And he found a guy in Sault Ste. Marie. He's now, he was a kid then. He's all grown up. And I fingered his ass a couple of years ago. And I have a feeling I'm going to be doing it in a couple of days again. <laughs> I don't know. You know, this is my career. Oh, and then the other thing is, yes, I've had, I, I think the record was on the East Coast. I did six or seven, I had them all lined up. And uh, what I didn't realize, but someone- Like a daisy out, chain of you just fingering guys' assholes? Yeah, but think about it. I only have two hands, which means uh, I had I had gloves on both hands, which I'm usually a single, right? So someone's getting someone else's duty in their butt because <laughs> someone pointed that out to me after the show. I don't give a shit. I'm wearing rubber gloves. But, <laughs> but Jason's got Bob shit in his ass uh, from my finger. You're giving everybody on the in the show C. difficile disease or Norwalk virus where you keep putting poop from someone else's ass into someone else's ass. It's sort of remarkable that I'm allowed to do it. Of course, I've had female volunteers. Have this you? happened once. I let the female finger me. <laughs> I'll never do that again. At, at, guess where I did that? At the rec room, which was... <laughs> Which is like a kids go there, but they couldn't see the show. Thank God. Uh, hold it, hold it, hold it, because that changes the whole game, right? Like if you have a female that comes up and uh, the, the, like, like at some point, someone out there that goes to the show has got a like. Is there a is there a is there something you sign? Is there like an NDA, I get verbal, a release form? I get verbal consent from them That's on good. stage, yeah. uh, and. Uh, I won't do it to a female, at least on stage. Is this your <laughs> privately? I have no issue with that, and I know a lot of gals that like it. So, anyways, but that's another story. You have to have some, some decorum. Yeah, oh yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta draw the line somewhere. Hey, exactly. Sven. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you totally try. Anyway, if you want to go see some of these shows, I highly encourage you go do it. Uh, Kenny versus Benny 20th anniversary tour. Uh, get your tickets at eventbrite.ca. If you put Kenny versus Benny in the search bar, when you go to Eventbrite, you'll be able to have a look at it again. Uh, these dates are done. We're now approaching April 1st, Sudbury. Uh, not quite sold out yet. Uh, yet. Already these have sold out, so make sure you go there uh, and check it out or go to uh, Kenny Hot's Facebook account. You can also follow Kenny at Spenny. Um, real quick, can we talk about the video? Can we talk about the video that got you in a little bit of trouble on Twitter the other day? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, well let me show the video first. I, okay. And again, again, we can talk about the efficacy, of, uh, the ethics of showing this, but I'm already knee deep in. So let's go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a video of a lady who's shopping, I believe, at Costco, Sam's Club, one of those big box stores. And she's got ass. Um, there's really no way to describe it. And and when you put it out, I had to watch it over and over again just to figure out what was going on with that ass. And I'm not being you weren't being uh, critical of the woman, but you wanted to know what it was. Right. We'll talk about that after. Let's show the goddamn thing. Here it is. <laughs> there it is. There's the ass in a moo. Uh, it looks like it's clapping. Uh, they look like thunder sticks, really big, fatty thunder sticks. You see it like a Raptor game where they slap them together during free throws to try to try to get the other player off his game. The guy shooting free throws. Th that is in a shopping mall, a, a shopping center, which appears to be Costco. And when you put this out, I wasn't sure what this was either. I didn't know if this was ass. I didn't know if this was back fat. I didn't know if those were tumors. I have no idea, and I still don't. So here's what happened. I, I probably sent it to you directly, did I not? Yes, did you did. You? Yes, okay. you did. Yeah. Because I know you have a very prurient, uh, immature sense of humor. Yes, I do. Uh, like I do, too. So uh, here's the thing. You know, I think it's legitimate. Uh, I didn't get many complaints. I got a few people saying that, you know, this is a, a, a edema or some kind of 
a word I couldn't pronounce and that we were shaming her or making fun of her. Uh, I don't know if I would have posted if we saw her face, but I might have. But let me tell you why. Yes. It has nothing to do with anything other than I have comedic instincts and I am, uh, I've devoted my life to them, music and comedy. Uh -huh. And uh, I looked at that and I said, hmm, I could make some funny comments to that video, which I did. I think I said something about twerking. Yep. Uh, there was a few things that I said. Uh, however, the people that had a problem with it, uh, I respect them. I, I think they're right. However, when it comes to, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone said D Dawn of man 69, the always, uh, you know, the, the medical, this, this is the medical Twitter account that I like to go to Dawn of man 69. Uh, come on, man. It's genetic. He says not her fault. The condition is called steatopegia. She's got a, she got dealt a shitty hand, no retries for her. So ease up if you can find it in you. And then you said, quote, I never said I was perfect. The twerking joke was irresistible. I'll buy her a beer one day with, in a bar with booths. <laughs> okay. So th there again, it's that uh, inability to not be funny is basically what that is. And well, here's funny. the question because we look like, first of all, I have no idea what that is. If that is uh, Stito Parisia or whatever the fuck it is. Great. Good stuff. Great. I come from an era where you see something like that and it's not just acceptable to joke, but if you don't joke about it and if you right. don't poke fun at it, all your friends will go, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, right. seriously, right? And when I when you sent that to me, I was like, you got to put that out. And you put it out. And I saw the cascade of hatred, uh, like this young lady here who said, karma might grow something unwanted on your ass. And then you said, you might grow a sense of humor. But I fucking loved how you pushed back because yeah. you didn't and, and say anything about the woman. Yes, I mean, you, you don't know if this woman could control exactly what was going on with, quote, that ass. Yeah. But... That ass is not something you see every day, and it's worth a conversation when you see something you don't see every day. But it appears that we can no longer do that. And as a comedian, that sucks. It's got to right. suck for you. And that's what it's about for me. That's the pushback. I mean, anybody who knows me, it's not like I'm anything close to politically correct, but I am somewhat of, as I like to say, a solid citizen. Uh, that would not be a solid citizen move that I did. However, my uh, love of comedy and being a, a, a you know a, a smart ass on social media, uh, you know, overtook that. And I'm not a politician. I, you know, I I don't really have to uh, be politically correct. You know, and uh, I don't like the uh, I don't like the limits on comedy that a lot of these uh, people. Uh, what do they call? I don't know if they're woke or whatever. I have a problem with it when it comes to comedy, but you know, you may disagree and that's fine. No, not I don't you. disagree. No, not, no, you, no. Not, you, not you, the viewers. Yeah. But, but that's kind of the funny part about where we're at. Like it was just as a study because I laughed my ass off when you put it out and you made a couple comments, like, is this twerking? Are those back boobs? What are those things? And, and all the right fighters, as you call them, woke people. And I think it's just extremes. Like we got extremes on both sides. Who cares? I don't even give a fuck to talk about them. But they make it so they, they make you feel bad. They make you feel bad for like no. being observational. At no, least I, make I felt bad in, inside myself. But again, for the third time, the uh, love of comedy and being a jerk on social media sometimes overtook that. So so again, if, if you think that's wrong, I almost agree with you. But uh, unfortunately, I, I, I do what I do. And uh I don't. I don't really have to not do it. I, I'm, I'm pretty much uncancelable, uh, you know. So I do what I do, and uh, I take the blame. But I, I don't put down the people that had an issue with that. I think they're they're probably right. But you can know, we? But but here. But here's the funny part. Like we live in a space now, and we operate in a space where you you can't have that. Like you just absolutely nailed an explanation that everybody should use every time someone says that's offside. I don't think you should have done that, or I don't think you should have said that. Which is you're allowed to have an issue with it and I'm allowed to not care about that issue. Right. I'm allowed. I'm, I'm allowed to stand here and say, you know what? I found that funny. I can see where you're coming from. But like, that's, that's the world we live in. And I think back to like the, can, the, I, can I interrupt you? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't find her condition funny. What I find is the comment I'm going to make to be funny. That's what I can't resist. I, I feel bad for her. That's not good. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> I, you know, there's got to be a fetish for this, though. By the way, 
here's the, what really crossed my mind when I started getting the hate. And I don't know, uh, you're younger than me, Dean, but do you, uh, did you watch, ever watch the Mary Tyler Moore show? Mm -hmm. Okay. The, their most famous episode, the one that won them, uh, the specific episode that won them, uh, uh, an Emmy, uh, they probably won many Emmys, was uh, one called Chuckles Bites the Dust. Now, do you, do you remember that episode? I don't, no. Okay, so basically they worked in the newsroom and downstairs there was uh, Chuckles the Clown who had a kid show at the studio. And he started banging Sue Ann Nivens, played by the legendary uh, Betty White. And uh, this particular episode, uh, they uh, it starts out with saying that Chuckles died he's he's dead and they go what happened he goes he was dressed as uh peter peanut one of his characters at a parade and he was stomped to death by a rogue elephant <laughs> so so that's like the first thing that gets the episode going yeah and for most of the episode it's lou and murray and he, i think ted i can't remember all making jokes about this horrible thing Right. Yeah. And the jokes were pretty good. It's like, uh, he, how did he die? He died of a busted goober. Um, there's my, uh, you, you know, not lucky. Nobody else died. You know what they say? Once you have one peanut, it's hard to, have another, you know, those kind of things. And, and then the brilliance of the episode is Mary, the main character thinks it's disgusting that they're making jokes about such a thing. Mm -hmm. So when they get to the end of the show, it's chuckles funeral. <laughs> And the, 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 the preacher or reverend or whatever you call it is doing the eulogy. And now everybody's completely serious because it's a funeral. And the, the, the eulogy says stuff like, we all remember his character, Mr. Fee Fi Fo, who always said, when you fall down, you might hurt your foo-foo. And Mary loses it for the first time <laughs> in the funeral. <laughs> And she's laughing and all the people that she was criticizing are looking at her. You know, how could you laugh at a moment like this? So then the 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 uh, reverend says, miss, miss, please stand up. And she's going, no, because you can't stop laughing. And he finally gets her to stand up and, and he says to her, miss, what you're doing is fine. Chuckles lived to make people laugh. Mm hmm. This would make him happy. And as soon as she say, he says that, she starts to ball. <laughs> it's absolute perfect sitcom writing at its highest level, in my opinion. You uh, know what? In an impression, too, right? Because, like, that's the one thing. We have got a, We live in a world where everybody likes to tell you how you can consume things and what's funny and what isn't, yeah. what you should or shouldn't say. Yeah. And, and I love off-color humor. Like I said to someone the yes. other day, I love racist jokes. It just sucks that they're racist, right? Like, I've heard some absolutely incredible racist jokes over the, yes. my 50 years on this planet that you just can never say that you've heard or told or been a part of. And oh, no, no, I, 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 uh, I do a, a very, very politically incorrect, dirty joke on the tour. Uh, and I do it because Kenny does so many and I'm trying to say I can do it, too. So, uh, again, it seems to me. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, or maybe. What's I'm the pushback live for stuff like that? That's the question I would ask you. Yeah, when you're doing that's why zero. I don't. That's why I do it. Zero. What can they do? What can yeah, they, they paid do? to be there. Well, I mean, we've had you know we do a lot of stuff that if you didn't know us, you might think we were homophobic. Uh, I, I'm sure you can relate to this. Of course, we're not. And uh, and uh, the pushback would be someone coming up to us and telling us you know how terrible we are. You know, which have I have you had that? Have you had that? Yeah, on tour? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Not a lot, but yes, it's happened. And, but does it ever give you pause for thought? Or are you oh. like kind of of the vintage where you're like, you know what? That's one person that was unhappy. I get it. They gave us $94.75. So whatever. Oh, no, we'll keep I, I'm into uh, law, the rule of law. So if if, if you want to be a Nazi and, and wear a Nazi regalia and show up anywhere, yeah, I don't like it. I think it's gross. But he's got he or she has the right to do that. It, you can't break the law. That's all. Mm -hmm. so I see. I feel the same way about that. You know, it, 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 the, 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 the version of that would be I can make a joke that might offend some people. But if you look at my life, am I have I done anything illegal or truly offensive? No, uh, at least you know, prob probably no. Uh, and I just tell the truth, man. You know, like I talk about how I used to throw eggs at homosexuals when I was a teenager. Uh, very ashamed of it, but you know, there's something very freeing about being just completely honest about, you know, even if it makes you look bad.
uh-huh. and uh, people can't come at come at you. You know, I'm I'm very comfortable with with uh, uh, I, I I identify almost as a feminist. You know, but I I'll do some jokes that <laughs> if you don't have a sense of humor, you might it might piss you off. You know, and I hate going back to the well of remember when, right? <clears throat> but I remember at one point in time when I was on the radio, I don't think our paths ever crossed when I was on the air. Uh, I think I might have interviewed you once or twice. I'm not, not sure. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, yeah. You, we came down to uh, the Eaton Center a couple of times. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it was always very intimidating because you were like, uh, it was like you were on speed and pissed off all the time. And Kenny was just trying to manage you like you were a farm animal. That That's right. kind of the, the impression that we got. And then, then I got hooked on the show. And I started watching back catalogs, ordered them from Showcase. I said, can you send me like the first three seasons? Anyway, doesn't matter. But bottom line, I remember a time, it's got to be 15 years ago, that we got a complaint live on the air. And this is back before Twitter happened, back before instant feedback, back before you used to get freaked out by someone texting you saying, I hate what you did. And then, you, oh, I don't want to do that. Right. Like it puts the fear of God in you when you go through that experience of that culture change and that shift. And I get it now. But. I remember doing and, and listen, not proud of it, much like yourself. <clears throat> I remember someone complaining that that I used the word retard and gay to refer to terrible things like that's retarded or that's gay. And I used it all the time. It was just how I grew up, the time that we lived in. You know, these terms, you know how we used to I talk. Used right? I still use them. Yeah. Um, well, just not publicly. I haven't seen you do it. Publicly. Oh, I do. I publicly 100 percent. I call you really thanks on the live show. 100 percent. You see, I have. The only way I can make hay with this uh, train wreck called Kenny versus Spenny is to realize that the audience actually hates me or they love pretending to hate me. Yeah. So I can't comedically do anything else but fight back and get angry. I mean, it would be it wouldn't be funny. So uh, so that's it. I mean, I, I say, I you know, Kenny does a joke uh, and, and he does it. It's almost. um a second nature. Like, I don't think he thinks about it because he said to me, maybe I shouldn't do this joke. It's a stupid old joke. You, you know, it's like, uh, Oh, Spenny said he didn't want to come to Edmonton because he heard that there were black people here or, or unless there was no black people or something. And then, uh, you know, he, I look, I look out in the audience and I go, and there's no black people here. And then he goes, well, maybe why don't you smile and we'll see if we can see, which is just old, you know, racist garbage, but it still gets a laugh. And, uh, and I, if you were to ask if I was at that show and you asked me my interpretation of that joke, it was like it was it's mocking how white the West is. Right. True. 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 But when you're dealing with uh, the sensitive people, uh, it's a comedy killer, uh, in my opinion. But again, again, uh, unlike really my brand, most of my favorite comedians, my absolute favorite comedians were quite edgy. You know, who, uh, who are Sam, your favorites? Well, Sam Kinison, Don Rickles. Yeah. Andy Kaufman to a certain extent with his sexist stuff. Uh, I love Dice Clay, uh, you know, so uh, it's just I'm very stubborn, you know, and, and, you know, maybe if I was getting paid a shitload of money on NBC, I would be careful <laughs> just for the money. Right. Uh, let's be honest. But uh, that's not how my career shook out. Uh, so uh, did you ever I- struggle with it? Because this is the one thing I used to struggle with. I don't anymore <clears throat> because going back to what I said when I went on this 20 minute tangent about how I'm, I'm allowed to use like I'm allowed to use words like gay retard, all those things. Yeah. I don't feel that way anymore. I don't feel like it's important for me to use that language. I think there's a lot of other language you could use. And I don't feel like putting that in people's day. That's just my conviction. No, that's but- fine. We've had lawyers, we've had you, we've had other people drop certain words on this show that don't bother me at all that I can, you know, that that register when you do. And you probably feel this way when you're doing content now where you're like, that might lead to a problem. That might lead to a problem. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, Dean. You're, you're doing it at your own risk, right? If you're intelligent, you know, when I do uh, the dirty joke that I do in the live show, that it runs the risk of really uh, hurting people, especially, I'm not going to do the joke, but someone who suffered uh, from uh, sexual abuse or something like that. But I make the choice, as I'm allowed to, to go for the laugh, what I think is funny. And if I pay a price for it, then it's nobody's fault but my own. The the thing I'll always be with me is I'm a big Richard Pryor fan. Uh, I didn't mention him, but I should have in when I listed the comedians. Uh, he he did a movie. I think it's just called Richard Pryor Live, the first one. Then he did the On Sunset Strip one. And he talked about the N-word. And his take on it was, use the word. Use it till it, it's meaningless. 
You know what I mean? And that really struck me as an intelligent way to deal with this kind of stuff, because there's always going to be those people that as soon as they know the word is verboten, they're going to use the hell out of it just to upset you. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. That, that's where it maintains its power, right? Yeah. Is when someone says that you shouldn't use a certain word. I mean, there, and again, personal conviction plays into this and I'm glad you fucking brought it up because there are personal convictions I share today that I didn't share like 10 years ago. And it's not about a sales thing or trying to endear myself to anybody. It's just a personal conviction where I'm like, yeah, I can see how me using that word in any sense would upset certain people around me and make me look like I'm not inclusive, which would prevent people from wanting to talk to me, be right. my friend. That's, do why business you're with me. that's why you're risking. That's what you're risking. Well, and do business with you too, right? Like that's the time that we live in that we never lived in back then. Like we didn't live in a time, like jokes are jokes. And, and when you see people complaining and co uh, comedians complaining, nobody has a common sense um, perspective into the new time that we live in where you got to be careful of social media, mob justice, et cetera. But y you look at it, it almost completely differently than anybody I've ever talked to about this subject, which is I accept the personal responsibility and the consequences that will come with the decision I make to do this joke slash content. Right. And, and if the consequences were different, like I said, I had an NBC show and I was making, you know, uh, two million a year, maybe I think differently. But that would be the reason. It wouldn't be any other reason. I, I think we live in a world where, you know, not everyone likes you. I was telling James this, uh, we were texting back and forth. Not everyone's going to like you and like what you think and like what you say. And you either uh, kowtow to it or you don't kowtow to it. And it, not, there's nothing wrong with not kowtowing to it, by the way. Did you? Uh, no, there isn't. And and I kind of appreciate that about like, it's funny because we can see it bear out in these culture wars we watch on Twitter and social media, right? Where people are like, no, you can't do this. And then other people are like, I'm going to fight you to the death to say that I can do that. And I can say this, whether it's pronouns, words, names, jokes, et cetera, et cetera. And, and for the first time, I would say in the last five years, I'm pretty clear on the fact that what you just said is the answer to all of these questions that people have, which is, Hey, man, accept personal responsibility for it. And if you can academically explain your way out of it like you just did, then fuck more power to you to claim that spot where you can go out and feel comfortable communicating, talking and earning a living specifically in a gig economy. Well, right? I think, you know, and there it goes. Like I listed my favorite comedians. None of them would probably have existed. Never mind. Uh, did well under this kind of regimented, uh, you know, speech thing and hurt feelings thing. And uh, but it is what it is. You can't really change culture. You just can react within it to what you feel comfortable with. Uh, in yeah. Your heart. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the thing that I, I center on, too, when we talk about content. And I'm glad to hear you say it because it's it, these are conversations that we never have. And I didn't think we'd get into this today where we were talking about culture and the evolution of comedy and what you're comfortable doing. But has it made you have the past few years and kicking off the tour again, getting through the pandemic? Um, you and Kenny used to freely do content like you could sit down, you could scope scope out a show, do a treatment, go forward and do it. Whether you were high on acid, hanging out with uh, Nazis or getting dressed up in KKK garb or uh, having, you know, uh, bikers dip their 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 nuts on your forehead. It doesn't matter what it was, but you never had to think like have that extra bikers, they were bears. Sorry, bears. Okay. Bears. Yeah, I apologize. There were bears in the no community. Problem. I get Apology it. Yeah. accepted. Yeah. Don't let it happen again. No, I, I never will. I apologize. Um, but it's that extra thing you got to take with you in your head all the time. Have, do you and Kenny, did you ever talk about it when you went back on tour where you're like, well, we talk about, like I said, like he's got a clip that, that he did and he did it. I know why he did it. He did it to make me angry at the time. I don't think it ever aired, but it's essentially, it was the episode where he dressed as uh, my uh, black maid. Uh, and then he intercut, I think it was who do black people like more, but then he, you know, as he often did, he went and shot a little comedy scene in his bathroom and he's, you know, he's, he's putting, he's dressed in complete blackface, which of course, you know, look at Trudeau, what he's dealing with, uh, but he's a politician. And then he goes into like uh, a little routine that lasts maybe a minute. That's every trope you can imagine. And it's fucking funny. I don't care what anybody tells me. It's funny. Uh, it, we've, we basically stopped putting that particular footage in. Uh, we try to be careful, but the reality is Dean, our brand 
you know, is our brand. We, we you know, we can't turn into the Lawrence Welk show uh, and, and buckle under pressure. Like it just, people but that's, think. I know. And that's, that's like the end result here is that, you know, Kenny versus Benny is such a big brand. You guys are known for a certain kind of humor. There's a wrestling match. that has been going on in my head for years now, right? This wrestling match of, um, not wanting to move away from content that made you and got you the audience that you, that you, that you right. have now. And that sustains you now, because if you pivot that audience, right, then they're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, we didn't come here for this. We have the same sensibilities right. as you. We communicate with you on that level. Why can't you just right. do that stuff? That's the wrestling match that goes on in my head on a daily basis, specifically when it comes to doing content. And by the way, uh, th there's been consequences for me and not that I give a shit at this point, but uh, I lost my YouTube channel. Uh, I believe it was from my uh, series X rated, which you would love, by the way, I should send it to you. Uh, I did a series for Super Channel and it was uh, overly sexualized and I lost my YouTube channel, never to come back. Uh, Kenny and I, I don't think, I think at this moment in time, we're not welcome on TV even if we wanted to be. Uh, I think that might change over the next five or six years, but you never know. So there is consequences. You just have to buck it up and be a man and take the consequences. If you're going to do the behavior, if the culture's changed and you don't want to change, then there might be consequences. Do you, what do you mean when you say that you won't be on TV? Have you tried to get Kenny versus Smitty back on television yet? Oh, really, not him? really, but you know, it, it's pretty much known that uh, the, the politically incorrect aspect of what we do is not exactly, you know, it, it's what got us off the CBC. I mean, things haven't changed that much. What, what we think might happen is that somewhere some fan, you know, real serious fan is going to end up as, as an executive at, at a network somewhere and try to bring us back. And as Kenny's always said, the older we get, the funnier it's going to be. I oh, mean, yeah. oh, my God. Uh, can you imagine us at 80 doing uh, some stupid comedy? It'd be fucking hilarious. So <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, you know, we don't want to. It's a sellout thing. You know, we, we just don't. <clears throat> I'm more I'm more capable of selling out than Kenny. Kenny's, you know, he won't change. Um, no, I don't think he wants to change or or, or would change. Uh, and you know, because you know, what, money, and he doesn't need the money. I do, so you know, maybe I would sell out for money, but it has yeah. to be. Yeah, but that's that's the risk that everybody runs in the new economy, right? Is is like are you going to be something to, to nobody then? Like, or are you just going to go out and try and fit into? No, it's you know, money. The landscape. Only money, dude. I'd be happy to if someone said, "Smenny, you have to do a show, but you got to go by these uh, rules, whether I agree with them or not." But we're gonna give you six million dollars. I will do anything to get that money because at the end of the day, uh, that money is for my family, and 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 and, and it'll make me happy, uh, more happy than almost any television show could ever make me. So. Uh, it would give me freedom uh, to not have to do the grind, you know, I'm just being honest. I mean, yeah. And I say this, I, I don't make any bones about it. Uh, when I do the live show, I'm telling them I'm here for money. That's it. I want your money and I want to get the fuck out of this shithole. And that's how I, that's how I talk to the fans. <laughs> Oddly, I think they respect the honesty. Uh, I think some people don't like it, but whatever. I don't care. That, but that dude, no, I, I really that's want your to go to I'm dying to do, do some tour, some fucking uh, uh, sightseeing in Sudbury. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm there to make money and get the fuck out of there. That's You're stoked to go to North Bay, are you? Really pumped to go to Cornerbrook, Newfoundland in May? Are you yeah. stoked for that? Yeah, I mean, come on, let's get real. <laughs> Uh, at least you're honest about it. Not many people are. And and, and you know what? I love the explanation. Oh, Kenny's, the biggest, Kenny's the biggest bullshitter. We love you, Sudbury. As soon as he walks off the stage, yeah. he's like, fuck, let's get out of here, dude. No, no, I, I won't even say that. Kenny loves the fans. He really does. And I'll give him, I'll give him that 100%. He's so appreciative of all of it. But because I'm Spenny in the Kenny versus Spenny thing, I'm not as crazy about the fans that call me an idiot and a moron and a loser all the time. Right. But that's natural. I mean, you know, so, you know, whether he loves Sudbury or not. Yeah, that that would be a total full of shit move. But he does love the people. OK, um, at what point? Because we've talked about this. Kenny's talked to us about this, said he was going to get his manager, your manager to contact us about this. I've been bugging you about this for months, months. But why and what is the holdup 
why are you not doing a podcast? Why are you not doing a Kenny versus Spenny podcast? I'll say exactly why. Uh, I would do it. Uh, Kenny won't do it because he believes, and I don't think he really believes this as much as he just doesn't want to do it, doesn't want to do the work. He had a, a kind of podcast or radio show on Sirius a while ago. It was actually quite good. Uh, you know, to him, he said, well, if we lived together in the same city and we had a studio that we'd go to every day, uh, you know, maybe. But it's just, in my opinion, and I can't speak for him, but I think he just doesn't want to do it. I think he maybe thinks it's beneath him. I, I think uh, I don't know exactly. During the last tour, he sent us an email and he's like, uh, hey, guys, thanks so much for the support. Uh, absolutely going to do the podcast with you. I'll hook you up with our with our people. And I'm like, great. We're here to help. And he's like, OK, we'll get in touch with you on the way, on the way back from whatever tour you were on, whatever. I mean, 20th anniversary tour. Haven't heard from you. Haven't heard from him. Well, I didn't. First of all, I, it's the first I've heard about you talking to him. So yeah. I don't know anything. Look, working with Kenny is challenging on many levels. He's a very complex personality. Uh, with a lot of issues. I am too, by the way. Uh, I just don't think he wants to do it. That's it. I, I don't know. There's no other explanation. By the way, I don't think what with what we do, we could get together once a month and block shoot or whatever you want to call it. Uh, six or weekend. Or episodes that have yes. nothing to do with current events because he's not a current events guy anyways. Yeah. Uh, he just doesn't want to do it. He's got his money. He's uh, you know, He's got a family. Does he want more money? Well, of course he, what he wants. Do you more want money. more money? Of course. Well, then let's do it. I'll take care of all the details. No, no, no. This no, no, no. More money to me and more money to Kenny are two different things. Yeah. Well, m more money is still more money. Money. G the color of the money is the same, and there will be more of it. Yeah, he's got it. a lot. He has a lot more money than I do. Therefore, uh, it takes a lot of money to get. Well, him then to why don't we leave? Okay. Well, then why don't we figure out what that dollar amount is? What does he need? Hundred bucks an episode? I've been dealing with this guy for fifty years. You could go. Go ahead. Deal with what does he want? What kind of dollars are we Ask talking? Him. That's what I'm saying. Well, you. what do you want? Let's start there and then we'll get to him. What do you want per episode? Well, it depends what uh, per episode. How yeah. long are the episodes? Where do I have to go? Do I have to Doesn't travel? matter. Okay. If I can get you, if you did seven episodes in a weekend, I could get you two to three grand an episode. Well, first of all, I like to have a good idea before I start talking about this stuff. That's me. That's the lame part of me. I'm Dude, you guys, you guys travel the country sticking fingers in your fans' assholes. No, I only do that. He refuses to do that. Oh, he's smart. He is smart. But uh, at the same time, it, it, it's a great, you know, I have to get credit for doing that. I have to. Yeah. As, as ridiculous as it is, the crowd fucking loves it. It's a great ending for the show. Uh, you know, you can mock me for it, but there has to be a, a little bit of decency inside saying, holy shit, this guy. They have me. Well, yeah, they, you know, I don't like doing it. It really is something I don't like to do. You don't I like don't. sticking your fingers in strangers' assholes? No, not really. But how much do you get paid per gig? Usually a couple grand, probably 10, Depends 15 grand. how many tickets we sold. Okay. So like if, so for half of, let's say it's, let's say it's 30 grand, 15 grand. Well, let's, there, I take 15 you, grand to stick my fingers in someone's haven't told me, You still haven't told me about the stupid podcast, where it's going to be, how many okay, times. Dude, we, we you do can it? come to the studio. I, I don't, it, it's up to you guys. We'll give you a studio. We'll give you a shoot. You can do whatever here's, you here, want. Here's what I'm going to tell you, Dean. Keep, okay. keep on Kenny. Uh, I've I've chased him for a long time doing. Well, what's his phone number? Give me his phone number right now, live on the show. <laughs> Giving you his phone number. Um, is he a three one three? He's three one three, isn't I'm he? Not, I'm not saying any of the words, uh, the numbers. Look, uh, look. If you can make it happen, I promise you. Unless it's a totally insulting, I'll be there because I actually like doing this shit. I'm yeah. doing. How much are you paying me for this? Zero. Right. I like doing this shit. That's me. I do, do th this is what I'm saying. You could go from zero to something. Yeah. And then you grow zero to something into zero to, to be, something it to has more. To be a something that will motivate him. Not me. So talk to him. All right, I'll email. I just, I'll send him a DM. I'll say that we had this conversation. I'm going to send him this clip. I'm going to say Kenny. Good luck time. with that. That's all I have to tell you. As someone who's worked with the man. Well, why you. don't you lean on him too? If you lean no, on him and tell him you need it, first, that's how you do it. You got to manipulate the, the guy. Worst, the worst thing, I can, like, he's unmanipulatable, first of all. Second of all. I can manipulate second him. Second of all, if I like it, it's dead in the water. So <laughs> that's just what it's been for years. I, I know it. I have a sense of humor about it, but I don't, uh, I don't pull any punches. I brought him a movie deal. When we were living in LA, we each could have pocketed a half a million dollars, and he didn't. He didn't do it. I think it's because I presented it to him. That's why.
It would have been a half a million dollars. He said no to half a million bucks because you were doing it and he didn't yeah, trust and this you? this was years ago. And this was years ago before he became... Well, rich. there's trust issues with you guys. Oh, there's, my God. That's what this is. There's trust issues between you and, and Kenny. He doesn't trust you at all. Right. And I can't say I blame him. I mean, my track record is pretty pathetic. Uh, but again, I will be there if it's not insulting. I like to work. I love to work with Kenny. Yeah. But you can deal with the absolute uh, tourists and uh, uh, shenanigans of Mr. Hots. I, hubris? I, his hubris? Well, yes. He has, deal with? he has hubris. Tsuris is Tsuris is something else. You have to look what did Tsuris? Explain that to me. Tsuris is like it's like anxiety and, uh, you know, difficulty of, you know, we live in a very Soros filled time. If you go on uh, social media, for example, I don't know the exact definition. I'll, I'll deal with that Soros. I'll deal with his hubris. Anything that ends in S I'll deal with them. Go ahead. I'll get him. I'll go. get Kenny and we'll get him on the show. Get, uh, try to, we try to get him on the show. He won't even do that. Like he won't even come on this show. Well, I'm sure he will. Well, if we ask him, maybe. but, there is a point where he's going to have to say yes, because that's where this is going. Like, if you guys want to make any and, and and here's the thing. You can go on tour live from your house. You can I'm make money. You can stream. You can sell tickets. To it. You can get subscribers to it. That's how famous you guys are. You're Still. preaching to the choir. Talk to him. Talk to the other guy. I'm going to, but I need your help. I can't go. No, well, I've I, already I, talked. My to help Kenny. will only hurt. You're not listening. My help will only hurt. That's write not that, true. Write that down. Yes. That's not true because he can't do anything without you. He can't. 50 years. Don't tell me uh, how to deal with Kenny. Okay. I know how to deal with Kenny. It's step back. Let him make decisions and uh, enjoy your life. That's how Kenny I deal shit. with it. Yeah, I do that sometimes. <laughs> sure. Man, I love talking to you. I'm glad we got a chance just to chop it up and have some fun today um, yes. with, with no distractions. I uh, value the stuff that you do. I would highly encourage everybody to go and follow Spenny at Spenny on Twitter. Highly encourage everybody, if you can, uh, in the comment section, and uh, appreciate everybody being here today, uh, to head to these dates, the 20th anniversary tour, uh, Kenny versus Spenny, Sudbury, April 1st. He says you have heard here first. He loves fans. Can't wait to go to Sudbury, spend 24 hours there with Spenny and Kenny. Uh, and it goes all the way through May 13th, Cornerbrook. Go to Kenny Hot's Facebook for more information here, and you can also follow, follow Spenny. All the information will be in your bio as well. Thanks for doing this, dude. Great to see you. Thank you, and I uh, love what you do too. So uh, there you go. All right, buddy. Mutual admiration right. society. Oh, nice. Talk right. to you. you know what the, the incredible part about this podcast is? You oh. didn't double fist drinks the whole time. I had a. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I had a. I had a. The vodka was up to here, and there was a little bit of pineapple juice. Anyway. I, stand, I stand corrected. Thank you for your honesty. All right. Thank you. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Spencer right. Rice, ladies and gentlemen. Kenny versus Spenny, 20th anniversary tour, which is uh, April the 1st. Sudbury is where it starts off uh, as they took a break from their giant world tour. Um, what a good man. I love having conversations about that kind of stuff. And the reason why is because I'm still trying to figure it out, too. What you can say, what you can't say, not for the sake of saying it. But, man, it's a gray area out there. Those parameters and fences that we used to operate in, they're gone. They're gone. Anybody can come over the fence now and fucking punch you in the face and tell you that you're not allowed to say something, do something. And I am just as tired of it as those asshole righties. With a lefty feel, which is weird. So I kind of don't like anybody on either side at this point. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, appreciate Kenny drop, Spenny dropping by. We're going to try and get Kenny on the show in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, tomorrow on this very program, I want to remind everybody, uh, former Blue Jays manager John Gibbons, he's got a new book out. He's going to stop by, and we're going to talk about uh, his time with the Blue Jays, both stints, a couple interesting stories. If you uh, haven't seen excerpts from John Gibbons' book, it is absolutely tremendous how open and honest this guy was about his end with the Toronto Blue Jays and his time with Alex Anthopoulos. And some of the stories that he tells about knowing that he's going to get punted from the Blue Jays, he's just reached cult status, and I fucking love the guy. And if you haven't seen his podcast, Gibby, it is tremendous. So uh, really excited to have John Gibbons on the program tomorrow. That's where you can see us next. Thanks to our friends at Cantork for making this possible. Canada's assembly tool experts, Ken Torque, makes hard-working, beautiful, rugged torque wrenches, the biggest and the best in Canada. 
and around the world, doesn't matter what it is that you need this for, whether it's the nuclear industry, railroad, heavy equipment, mining, these guys take care of your industrial torque needs and any loosening and fastening needs. It's what they do. Uh, no matter the scale of your bolting project, they have your solution. Fabrication, rental, calibration, sales, service, A, even the maintenance of some of your stuff, they'll take care of it. Their best practices, and they brought all the manufacturing back from overseas to Canada over the last year. Uh, so make sure you deal with these guys proudly Canadian, employing Canadians, and delivering around the world solutions in the, in a torque uh, torque wrench industry that nobody else can find. That's what they do. Cantorque.com. Learn more by going there today. Talk to my friend Colin Livingston. He's a beauty. Race season starts. He's probably racing with Alex Tagliani right now as we speak. Um, speaking of rock stars, how about my friends at Kivlaw.ca? Hey, you want to go and speak to a lawyer? You can, especially if you've got an issue and you're in Southern Ontario and you need someone to walk you through your legal issue. Any offense, any arrest, doesn't matter what it is, any crime, any litigation. If you need a friend through that process and you want to get your life back, uh, you need legal help immediately. Rob knows your his clients need your situation cleaned up, cleared up, and a defense lawyer that knows what they're doing understands how to fight for you. They want a trial lawyer who cares for them, responsive when they need answers. That is my friend Rob Kivlikin at kivlaw.ca, kivlaw.ca. Head there today or just email robert at robert at kivlaw.ca if you're in Southern Ontario. And last but not least, Gitch. Dean Blundell Show is brought to you by Gitch, engineered for any level of performance, luxury boxer briefs, pouch in the front, super breathable, and you can buy buy three and get one free if you go to edsfineimports.com with our very own promo code. Again, Gitch3, you get a free pair of underwear when you check out. If you buy three or more, Gitch3 is your promo code, edsfineimports.com. Made for all levels of performance so that you can walk, sprint, or run through the day in super soft, barely there comfort. Uh, keeps you cool with moisture wicking action, luxurious modal. You'll never want to take these things off. Trust me, I don't. You won't either. You'll never buy another pair of underwear again. Boxer briefs with a pouch in the front. Gitch from edsfineimports.com. Gitch3 is your promo code. Check them out today. Have a great day. John Gibbons tomorrow right here on this very program. Download, subscribe. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have a wonderful afternoon. Yeah. Because you get to decide that today. That's the beautiful part of life. You can decide how good your day is by choosing the attitude that you walk through it with. Yes, that's true. I know, right? Motivational Dean is in the haze. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye.